Look at all those lakes. The deserts of the southwest are full of creeping, venomous creatures. And there's one particular predator that is the most fearsome of them all. The centipede. Overlooking the Sonoran Desert is a mountain range locals call the Sky Islands. While many people come here just for the view, these isolated habitats are unlike anything else in the US, meaning that there is a whole slew of strange creatures that call them home. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm hiking this mountain range on the search for centipedes, particularly one venomous centipede that I haven't seen before, the tiger centipede. While it has the widest range of any of the giant centipedes here in North America, Scolopendra polymorpha is one terrifying arthropod that has eluded me for years. Somewhere in the rocks and logs that are scattered about the mountainside, there is a nightmarish myriapod waiting to be uncovered. And I won't stop until I track it down. But centipedes aren't the only strange creatures that call the Sky Islands home. Have a look at this odd little spider. This is actually one I've never seen before. It looks kind of like a wolf spider, right? But look at those eyes. Yeah, look at the face there. You can see that's not a wolf spider at all. In fact, because of how similar they look to wolf spiders, this is actually part of a really, really obscure group of spiders called the false wolf spiders. Here in the US, they're not really all that common. In fact, I don't even think we know what species this is. What I'm noticing is this spider really, really hates the light. Almost reminds me a little bit of the, the wandering spiders we see in Florida. As long as I keep it kind of in the shadow here, the sun's pretty harsh. You know, here in Arizona, we don't really have clouds. So uh, that sun is brutal. But as long as I keep her in the shade, you can see she kind of will just sit still, which is funny. When I, when I flipped her, she actually fell into the dirt under the log. I almost wonder if they like to sit upside down in cover. So kind of like the Florida wandering spiders, I'm thinking they probably are gonna be looking for similar types of, of habitat, like cover that has space underneath. We're out here looking for centipedes, and sometimes you do find stuff that is considerably rarer than the thing you're looking for. That right there, it's a very, very special spider. And one that I thought would be Nice to feature, even for just a few minutes here. So we're gonna go ahead and let this little spider go and keep flipping rocks and logs and see if I can get that common desert centipede after all this time. Hiking through these mountains is breathtaking. Between the scenic overlooks and the cool breeze from mountain streams, if I had to describe this adventure in one word, it would be refreshing. Such a beautiful, unique habitat, lush with wildlife, unlike anything I've ever seen before. And the higher we climbed, the weirder these creatures got. Look at this little guy. This is a peculiar looking scorpion. Really, really odd, kind of cool coloration there. And he's really small. Actually kind of hard for you to see him. I'm actually gonna take him out. I'm gonna see if he's handleable real quick. Probably like Spencer, this is a scorpion you've never seen before. How do you know this is safe? Well, a couple reasons. Number one, I can tell it's not an Arizona bark scorpion. Arizona bark scorpions are very slender and pale and kind of like they, they don't see enough sunlight. It's also not a bark scorpion at all. And I can tell that because look at those giant claws there. Huge, huge claws. My guess, it's some kind of devil scorpion. Man, he moves really weird. Now scorpions are one group I don't work with nearly enough, but this guy is an unusually weird one. The way he's moving is almost intelligent. I don't see, uh, scorpions act smart all that often. Look at that. Really, really odd. Just watch how it moves there. It's like calculated. Normally when I work with scorpions, they kind of just scurry about like mad. This guy seems to almost be piecing things together. Really, really neat. I am watching which way he moves because I'm sure if he did get cantankerous, a sting would probably hurt. But I can tell this is a safe scorpion just by looking at those claws there. Huge, huge claws portionate to his body. 
which means more than likely, rather than his venom being the primary thing he's using to subdue his prey, it's probably brute strength. And we've seen a lot of like termites and ants under these rocks. My guess is he's probably eating those. He's probably eating ants and termites. And one of the most common ants we're seeing out here are these uh, Campanotus carpenter ants, which are non-venomous. They have no sting. There's not a whole lot of stuff out here that's small enough for him to eat. That's also dangerous enough for him to really have dangerous venom. So my guess is it's probably more of a brute force hunter and probably not all that serious of a scorpion to interact with. So this is totally safe. Handling a scorpion I've never seen before. No idea what species. If I can idea it, you'll see on the screen. But uh, what a special little scorpion here in the mountains. The nice thing about searching for subterranean creatures on a mountain is you have plenty of cover to flip. Each rock could hide a weirder creature than the last, and these isolated mountains are chock full of all sorts of brand new creatures I've never seen before. The climate up here is so different from the deserts down below that the animals up here have existed separate from their distant relatives for millennia, leading to all sorts of weird appearances. Finally, we came to a bit of a ravine with dozens of rocks scattered about, and after all this time, I came face to face with a centipede that I've wanted to see for years. Yep, what kind? Yep. Polymorpha for sure. Polymorpha, baby! Yep, got him. Oh, that's a beautiful one. Finally! Dude. Oh, man, dude, I've been looking for one of these forever. <laughs> have a look at that. At long last, I finally have the common desert centipede. They're supposed to be common. It's it's in the name. And my last time in Arizona, I saw neither hide nor exoskeleton of them. Sure enough, they actually live up to their name on this mountain. They're actually common here. Let's uh let's take them out real quick and have a closer look at the centipede that's been eluding me for a very, very long time. There's one animal that I'm a little bit leery of. It's these centipedes. They're very, very fast, very unpredictable, and especially one of these younger ones. I mean, you can just see how quick its movements are. That is one creature I do not think I am comfortable free handling. So I think for the duration of this segment, I'm gonna keep them on this stick here. Interesting to watch how they move though. All those legs just kind of like a like a venomous locomotive. These centipedes are kind of like perfect predators for this environment. They they can take down just about anything. They're fast. Their exoskeleton's kind of flexible, so they can even squeeze into tight spaces. Their uncanny ability to actually sniff out their prey means there's not much you can do once a centipede's on your trail. You can see he's running those antennae all over this stick. And he's even like like lifting his body up to kind of probe the air. This centipede has eyes, but centipede vision is not really their, their strongest sense. They're more just for distinguishing light from dark. And he can tell that he's exposed right now because it's bright out here. And you, as you can see with how fast and erratic his movements are, he is not happy about it. Those antennae are just kind of sweeping and scanning everywhere, trying to make sense of what the heck is going on. They seem to be calming down just a tad. I'm not entirely sure how intelligent centipedes are, but when they are exposed, after a little bit, once they realize they're not being eaten, they do sometimes calm down. And he does seem to be slowing just a little bit. His movements are getting a little bit less erratic. So he might actually sit still for us. We can take a better look at him. Really insane looking creature. This is not as big as they get. This is about the size of all the ones we've been seeing. We've flipped like, what, like 10 now? And this is the prettiest one we were able to find. So take a look at that striping, that bright orange head. It's not a pattern that's gonna give this centipede any camouflage. This centipede wants to be seen. What's funny is not only is this centipede venomous, but there's actually a lot of variation in the venom of this species of centipede. Polymorpha, the actual species name, means many forms. There's tons and tons and tons of variation within this species, so much so that people are wondering if it's probably gonna get split up at some point. As a result, you get all these different patterns and lots of different venom compositions. So bites from these guys can range from bee stings to really, really severe, severe pain, almost on par with the giant desert centipede. I don't know what this guy actually is packing and in my experience handling centipedes of around this size they always tend to bite me so 
I'd rather not handle it and find out, but since he is chilling here, we can take a better look at him, which is nice because he was flipping out just a minute ago. Absolutely incredible little centipede. When they're calm, I really like just taking a close look at like those terrifying mandibles in front. They're actually modified legs, call them maxillipeds. See that really black chitinized, almost like an, a needle in the front. And it looks exactly like what it's designed to do. These centipedes will use that to just grab onto and inject their prey full of their venom. And Scolopendra venom is actually pretty interesting. These are invertebrates that can actually take down vertebrate prey. We've seen lots of little spiny lizards and stuff. I guarantee you an adult centipede like this probably could take down a small spiny lizard. They're not super, super picky on what they eat. It's really just a matter of if they can take it down, it's lunch. You know, normally we think of centipedes and things like that as these little, you know, bug hunting invertebrates that just live under logs. But out here in the Southwest, the centipedes are are kind of on another level. With the tiger centipede captured, that leaves one more giant centipede in the deserts of Arizona that I need to track down. The giant desert centipede. These monstrous myriapods might be the only arthropods that genuinely chill me to my core, so I'm going to have to conquer my fears if I want to finally capture it. I may work with tons of freaky and venomous creatures now, but it didn't start out that way. If you want to learn how I conquered my fear of spiders, maybe even to conquer that fear yourself, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.